In the last engraving video I did, I talked about the tools and equipment and the workspace required to get started in hammer and chisel engraving, which is the traditional style of engraving where you're standing at the vise with a hammer in one hand, chisel in the other, and you're carving in those uh, lines that make up the scroll work that decorate the surface of guns, knives, and other metal objects. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you those first baby steps to get started once you have that equipment. Let's get going. The first step is just gaining that basic tool control, which is in cutting arcs. And these are some arcs that I did a while back ago. So a little hard to film this kind of stuff. But these are just small arcs in between uh, half inch space lines. And it doesn't have to be half inch, that's just roughly what it is. And this is all done in just some mild steel. So this is some cold rolled mild steel from Lowe's, just two inch wide pieces. Doesn't really matter. You want it a little thick to where it's not so thin that it's uh, 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 rattling around, shaking around. This is some 3 sixteenths. So 3 sixteenths or a quarter inch. That's a three foot piece. I think it's around $11. Um, uh, but that's a lot of uh, practice plates out of something like that. So you can get metal cheaper, um, but uh, you're going to get a lot out of that and it's readily available. Um, and you can see that this surface is a little cleaned up. I just knocked it smooth on a belt grinder. Um, you can use uh, just your belt sander or pretty much anything. It doesn't really have to be all that smooth just for this. You're just practicing. Um, the next thing you're going to do is scribe in some lines uh, and that's just to space out your um, your arcs. And you can make these different sizes. You know, you can change it up across your metal. At first you just want to just pretty much do them all the same. And you don't have to worry about it being exact. And that's going to give you um, just some lines that you'll be able to do your arcs in between. So this kind of work is kind of hard to film, so you'll have to bear with me the best you can um, trying to work around the camera without whacking it. But uh, basically all you're doing is when you start, you're just holding the, uh, the actual tool steel between your fingers. You're placing the point of the chisel down on the metal. And then once it's in the metal, then you're just going to start to make your cut. Now depending on what you actually want your cut to do, um, or how it needs to appear, you could either be laying your tool this way or laying your tool so if my fingers the actual surface you're cutting the tool itself may be um, laid this way or this way sometimes you're cutting an arc in this direction sometimes you're cutting an arc in this direction so you're going to change around back and forth um, you can see that happening in a lot of these uh, these arcs go this way then these arcs go this way then this way then this way um, sometimes you can try to start in really lightly and taper it into a deeper cut and end it over here at your deepest or the opposite start out deep and then feather out all these arcs are basically what makes up any design it's just arc can be longer or shorter a tighter radius but in general arcs are what makes up the majority of scroll work and engraving well there's a lot more going on in engraving than a really close up of metal curling off the tip of the tool so I back the camera up and I'm going to show you the actual body mechanics of what I'm doing. Again, I am not a master engraver, but in general this is what you're going to do. So the actual body mechanics of doing the engraving is pretty much everything and that is that you're moving your body around the vise instead of moving your arms and your wrist. Basically once you start into that cut, you're pretty much in the same position. You're just pivoting your body around the vise and that's what creates that actual arc. If you got into moving your hands around and your arms around too much and if you couldn't move your body any further and you try to cheat by moving your arms, you're going to create an uneven curve. It will show up. Of course, once you fully grasp the concept of engraving and you've got all the tool control you need, there's cheating and it's going to work out for you just because you're good enough to do it. But when you're just learning how to do it, you're not going to be able to pull that off without it uh, sort of looking bad. In any way, there's no reason to do it anyway. You're learning how to do it, so learn how to do it right. So here are the arcs I was cutting in the video. And again, this is something you're going to do with a lot of repetition. You're just going to fill these plates up front and back. And here are some other practice plates. Get the light repositioned. Um, you know, pretty much just any size plate you can get a hold of, anything metal that uh, will work good. Now, of course, this is all flat, and most, uh, well, not well, a lot of things you'll engrave will be flat, but when you get into engraving knives and guns, things are not going to be flat, and that's where practicing on different uh, shapes um, 
different shaped surfaces are going to come in handy. This is not a plate, but it's practice um, I was doing just on this tube here. Uh, and this is sort of uh, as if you were engraving uh, gun barrels or just any kind of shape. And this, of course, is a uh, convex surface. There's also concave surfaces in what you're doing. So you can imagine if um, to cut one of these lines, if your tool has to be held at, say, this angle, if it's a curved surface, you're going to be having to maintain depth on that surface by following, you know, maintaining this angle while the surface um, is actually changing. So that can be, um, you know, that's a whole other ball game. You can go from being able to do perfect little arcs with the right amount of uh, lean in the tool and all that, uh, but then you go on to something curved and it's like you're just a beginner all over again. So, um, so that's sort of the next uh, uh, level of practicing. Um, here's a look at that stuff, because you know, just those little arcs are boring. Um, but you know this is just some so this is just the scroll work and you can see how all that scroll work is basically made up by different size uh, different radius and different length uh, arches so that sort of uh, demonstrates the purpose of it of course once you get into something like lettering um, that's a little different and of course doing borders um, that's like a little ribbon type thing um, you cutting straight lines and uh, stuff so the arcs are, of course, only part of it, but it is sort of the majority of it. And then after you engrave all of your arcs, which is all you're going to do for quite a while, then you'll get into practicing shading. And uh, the shading itself can be done with single point shading with the same engraving tool. Let me find an example of that. So on this little pattern here, see if I can get close enough, you can see those shade lines that are added in to that um, uh, design there and those are just single point um, shade lines so that's meaning that the tool itself is the same tool that cut the main lines of the scroll work was used to cut that uh, that shading another tool that you can use is a shading tool let me see if I can get on this good enough but you can see how this tool right here creates multiple lines and that is a tool um, that you buy. So let's see. I think you can get the idea. I'll show you what it looks like real quick if I can find it. Let's see, here it is. So it's going to be a little hard to see, but there you go. So you can see that that tool has a bunch of ridges on the underside and then the main grind on the tool, like that, sharpen it, and then that is going to leave many lines. So with this tool, you basically will start on its edge and then as you're arcing you lay it over and more and more of those little teeth will engage in the steel and create those shade lines so that's a very fast way of shading um, and a way of uh, kind of texturing backgrounds and stuff as well so see if there's anything else interesting on these plates to show you there's the punching that's some very uh, crude punching. Let me see if there's any anything better anywhere else. Slightly better punching. So this is all stuff that I've done practicing arcs with that shading tool. And all this stuff looks so simple when you're looking at it. But just to get to this level, which is still fairly crude, uh, is it's a lot of time involved in it. I mean, let me show you an example of what engraving looks like when you first try it. Um, well, just a lot of this stuff on this side is fairly crude. Let me see. I'm sure I've got one of these plates. With, yeah, right there. This is what someone picking it up for the first time will do. All this stuff right in this area. You can't even get the tool to go into it. You can't get it to stay consistent once you do. I mean, basically, you're just, you're just scratching up the metal. Um, then once you can, you're doing stuff like that, digging in really hard. Uh, this was my wife uh, kind of practicing. She kind of was interested in learning how to do this as well. Um, now, of course, she hasn't ever picked these tools up. So this doesn't mean she's some sort of, uh, um, you know, a dummy that can't do anything. She's very skilled at uh, drawing and painting and 
uh, does other art uh, forms of art as well. So um, she's cut dovetails for those of you who are woodworkers. Um, but this is what it just is. Just this is, is an alien craft if you haven't done it before. It's hard to transfer like skills from woodworking over into engraving. Um, it's just a whole different thing. And then you can see some of these much more consistent. These are ones that I was doing um, just back to back, just just working on practicing. So all this is kind of from a while ago, and you can see you can practice straight lines as well, because doing straight lines is part of engraving for doing borders and such. So more of all this. So you end up just filling up plates and plates of this and doing lots of practice. So, so here, for example, is another thing. Once you get to the point to where you want to enter into doing some scroll work, you can, uh, um, uh, well, start doing some scroll work. This is uh, a little simple pattern that would be on a border that my father cut. And then I transfer this pattern with a black chalk, and then you put clear tape and run over it uh, with a pencil, and then wax up this surface, and you can transfer that design over. So then that was me copying that design. And then same is up here too. That's that same design. And uh, uh, same goes for this right here. This design was cut. And then a pull is what it's called when you do that transfer. A pull was made. I transferred it here and cut it. Now, all this stuff is old stuff. These, you can see these plates are getting rusty. They've been sitting around. Some other designs. This is a design kind of up in here. Um, this is one of the designs kind of underneath all that scratched up stuff that I just uh, engraved on um, uh, some revolvers. And this is all engraving from some other designs as well. So all these things that I'm practicing with are pulls that I take from stuff my father's engraved. Um, so for example, this right here was a pull plate meaning that after the gun was prototyped, and say there's going to be several of these guns that are all engraved the same, you can cut these designs on a flat piece of metal like this, and then if you have uh, engravers working for you, those engravers can take poles off this plate and transfer them over to those other, um, the firearms, for example. And so this always stays the same, so you don't need to take the poles off the actual engraved item itself. You have the pole plate. Um, so I've got a lot of these as well from past uh, things my father's worked on. This is some of my early engraving. I forgot about this. So I did all this. I was scratching the metal up, digging into it. You can see it was going in like a nail. You know, all this is very crude. But like I said, even just to get to this, this was this is a this is an achievement just to get to something looking this bad. Now you're looking at this on video, and it might look better, and it looks in person. But this is some rough stuff. Uh, getting into practicing stuff like circles and ovals, that's another thing you can do. But again, all you're doing at first is you're just trying to do this. I mean, you're going to have, you're going to be doing this in probably after 15, 20 minutes. You're going to be thinking, oh, my neck hurts, my hand hurts, my shoulder hurts, my elbow hurts, I'm tired. It, it, it is as lightweight as it looks as far as work goes, it will wear you out because you're just standing there, swiveling back and forth, holding your neck down. Um, you know, engraving's probably not good for you in reality. But, um, so that really is just the basics. There's so much more that you could talk about um, in all this, but I just want this to be as simple as possible with a couple extra things added in just for reference. Um, but this, you know, this type of work can lead to many different things for you uh, as far as what you could engrave, uh, what you could do professionally, but just as a simple hobby. Um, or interest, uh, it, it's kind of a fun thing to learn how to do. Uh, of course, you'll have your work cut out for you, and uh, like I said, that barrier to get going is pretty steep as far as uh, the cost and the, uh, the work that's going to be involved in learning how to do it. But if you're a person that just enjoys tools and enjoys learning how to do anything, um, do different crafts, you know, that's not a bad thing. So um, I guess that uh, pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you again for watching the video. Um, if you have any questions, just go ahead and send them to me. I'll leave a co question down in the comments. Um, if you have specific things that you'd like to see gone over in the future, just let me know. The next type videos I plan on doing are 
actually talking about laying, um, drawing some of the uh, scroll work down on the metal, the steps you do to do that, actually engraving some scroll work, demonstrating some of that, and some of the more detailed oriented things as far as the engraving goes. Each one of these things I mentioned, there's a lot of small steps that make up that one uh, technique. Drawing, for example, you're waxing up the surface, you're doing some borders, then within that border you have to design the, the layout of uh, the scroll work, for example, which may have to be sort of changed throughout. You know, you work your way up to the design. You don't always just draw it on there and it work out the first time. So um, that's just one example of many um, parts of the engraving. So, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, send them to me, email, Facebook, uh, here on YouTube, however you want, and I'll do the best to answer um, those with the knowledge that I have. Uh, okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.